Hi everyone, uh, it's time for the weekly booze vlog thing where I drink beer and talk about shit. So this is this week's beer. Uh, I don't know what it's called, Triple Carmelier. Uh, um, Blonde Robust. Blah. Blonde, robust, smooth and fruity three grain beer with final fermentation in the bottle. Brewed with pride and patience after Carmelite tradition with wheat, oat and barley. 100% natural beer. Um, it's got stamps on it. It's got foreign on it. It's got more foreign on it. Belgian beer. Um, I don't know if that means a Belgian style or if it's made in Belgium. It says Belgian style triple. I can't really find any much information on it as to uh, what, like, where it originates from, like where it's made. Is that the is that the address? I can't tell. Anyway, this was um, the fruits of my recent ex, ex uh, my recent adventures in Waitrose, um, as recommended by Anthony Taylor. He said go and have a look in there, so I did, because um, he said they had some interesting high strength beers. This is the highest strength one I could find, apart from Special Brew, and it's eight point four percent. I don't know if this is one that you were talking about or one that you've tried. Let me know if you have. It's got a nice bottle art. It looked quite posh. Um, I don't frequent Waitrose. It's a bit posh for my liking, but if I got some nice Aberdeen Angus burgers from there as well, and had them tonight. They were very tasty, and it actually wasn't as expensive as I thought it'd be in there. I mean, this was maybe a couple of quid compared to that. Ponzi shop I found that sells all these craft beers and they're trying to charge you like 20 quid for a bottle or something um, I mean not cheap not cheap for a tiny bottle but I mean it's not as pricey as I thought it would be you can see there that's, I guess that's a bit of sediment that whitish patch there so you can, I, I don't know, you can't really see on this, um, I wonder if I can get a light source behind it, but in the bottle it's kind of all wispy. I wonder what I can shine behind this to make it light up. <clears throat> Try my phone. No, my phone's not bright enough. Can you see that? I don't know. I can't. I can't show it on the video. But if I hold up the light, it's like got this like ghostly light to it. I'll tell you what. I'll turn the camera around. We'll look at the. There we go. Can you see? interesting looking beer and I've never seen a beer that looks like that in the bottle before so there you go let's try this out <clears throat> I do enjoy beers that have got um, a bit of the uh, sediment in there I like drinking it I know people like to try and pour it out and not have it mixed in with the beer I quite like the taste and just the notion of drinking a bit of yeast down unfermented yeast or whatever it is anyway so we'll go pour it into a wine glass just for extra posh points pouring very badly <laughs> spilt it shit Well, that initial little froth taste was very nice. I did pour a bit on my socks though. Um, yeah, let's have a look. 
more carbonated than I thought. See how bubbly it is. It looks almost like champagne or something. I know some of these beers they finish off with a champagne yeast or champagne something. I don't know if that's the case here, but it does look very fine bubbles, very uh, carbonated. Yeah, very Belgian beer tasting. They've got a certain taste, don't they? Uh, I don't know really how to describe them. Flavors almost—it's—it's it's very sweet and biscuity, but for some reason it reminds me of carrots. This taste—I don't know why. It's like the sweet. It's got a sweet carroty taste to it. It's the only way I can describe it. But very biscuity and almost yeah like almost like a champagne taste. Must be just the bubbles or something, I don't know. I have to wipe my table here. I was a bit over enthusiastic with the pouring and ended up overflowing my glass and dripping everywhere. Oh. Yeah, it's nice, it's mm, Sweet, and in the kind of cloying way. I'm not sure I could drink much of this, but um, it is definitely very nice. There was some in there that had like the labels had like um, hand handwritten, like the date on them was like handwritten on each label, which looked cool. But they weren't as strong as these ones, so I got the strongest one. All that goodness. That's the bottle empty. Well, it doesn't look empty, but that's all froth on the bottom. It's almost like Coca-Cola, it's so sweet. I think I've said this about other beers in the past. When they're very fermented, or very carbonated and very sweet, it always just reminds me of a glass of Coca-Cola. So anyway, cheers, Anthony Taylor. Thanks for the suggestion, going to Waitrose. Um, I might go there again, it's a bit far away from me. I have to go all the way to Hexham. Main local one, I think. I don't know. It's quite far to go for me. <clears throat> also, cheers to Stone Shaman who, uh, Hope you're enjoying your uh, morning glory trip. Hope it's going great for you at the moment. <coughs> yep, there we go. Drinking. Huh. Cheers to Phil Abbott. Thanks for the tweet earlier. And uh, I think you asked us a couple of videos ago, I didn't re reply because I didn't have any dream. You said there was there any updates in the dream journal that I keep. I don't really keep it that often anymore. Um, only when I have like a really weird dream. But I did have one that I wrote in the other day. And it's a um, kind of dream that makes us want to learn how to make games. Just to make this thing a reality. I had a dream that I was playing a computer game called Robot Dog Confessional and um, the aim of the game was basically you build your own robot dog and then you um, walk it around a stately garden and um, the aim of the game is to find 
greenhouses dotted around this garden. It's like a maze or whatever. <coughs> and then inside some of the greenhouses are Catholic priests. So you go into the greenhouse and then the dog does a confession with the priest in the greenhouse. Um, I don't know what the point of the game was apart from that. You just took your dog around this garden for confessional. I don't know why you had to build a robot dog for this purpose. But um, it was like you were going around the garden, you went into the greenhouse and then it was like you were seeing through the eyes of the dog as the priest sort of came down, bent down to the dog and um, I guess the dog confessed all its sins to the priest and then you moved on to the next one. I wouldn't mind learning how to make games just to make that game a reality. Ah. So if anyone knows how you make games, or the best way to learn, since we have a lot of shitty games coming out on Steam at the moment, it looks like anyone can just frog together any any old game if they want to. So it mustn't be that hard to do nowadays. Just download Unity or the Unreal Engine or something and throw something together. Sell it for 20 quid on Steam and make a million dollars. I thought that was quite an original idea. Straight out of my own dreams. Oh, I'm, this beer is getting a bit sweet for me, to be honest with you. That's nearly all bottle gone. I've got a book recommendation. Oh well, this is a, a what I've got is a collection of his stories. Franz Kafka, quite a well-known author, but I've never read any of his stuff before, ever. And um, I'm only about that far through. I've read The Trial, which is one of his famous stories, and I'm about halfway through The, the Castle. And one of his stories. Um, I was absolutely blown away by the trial. I thought it was amazing. Um, basically, a guy is on trial, but he doesn't know what he's accused of. It doesn't seem like anyone who's holding the trial knows what he's accused of. None of his lawyers or anyone trying to help him in his case know anything about what he's accused of, and they're all trying to help him or hinder him and he's just a disorientating kind of nightmare scenario of him going around in this world where he's basically going through a trial but without knowing anything about the trial I don't know how to explain it, you've got to read it but uh, I recommend this author, anyone likes books Franz Kafka I like things that are kind of quite original, you know, that's what this is. Um, <clears throat> another one of my favourite authors, J.G. Ballard. I don't know why this reminded me of it, I don't think it's very similar, just that kind of very modern style of writing, uh, postmodern or however you want to say it. I guess postmodern's right. Um, <coughs> but yeah, there's a little recommendation. Franz Kafka, The Trial, and any of his other works. <coughs> ah. Hmm. Well, he never finished the story, that's uh, one thing. I don't think any of his stories he finished, so... This trial thing just keeps going round and round in circles and then it just ends because he didn't finish it. He just wrote like a little chapter to finish off the ending. He never finished the bloody thing, so it's even more frustrating. No. I watched the movie The Texas Chainsaw last night, I think that's how it's called. The The modern day... Texas Chainsaw Massacre sequel, which takes place 
well, it takes place like years after the original Texas Chainsaw, but it, it starts off with footage from the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, which is one of my favourite movies, and then goes forward into modern times, and uh, um, it's a bit of a, uh, well, I guess the original was a bit of a teenage kind of movie, but it's a bit, I don't know why, in modern movies, when they just really force the teen aspect down your neck. I don't know why it puts me off in horror films. Probably because I'm a 30 year old fucking stick in the mud miserable bastard and I hate to see youthful people on TV. But, um, yeah. Bit of a weird film. Anyone seen it? Let me know your opinion of it. I, I, thought, I thought it was quite enjoyable, really, in a kind of, in a way. Um, it did kind of spoil Leatherface a bit. It gave me him a bit too human. It gave him, gave him a bit too much of a backstory, which I thought he was a lot creepier before you knew what he was, who he was, you know. Um, yeah. Anyone seen that film? Let me know what you thought, because I watched it last night. I thought it was strangely entertaining but yeah people get annoyed at films because they, they say oh it's shit all over the original or something but the thing is like the originals are still there it's not like they're taking the original films and then burning all the copies and making a new one and then saying right this is the only Texas Chainsaw Massacre film I think people think that other people watching the film are too stupid to realise that there was like an original film and they'll think that that's the original or something I don't know don't know why people get mad at when they make new versions of films and they're not as good as the old ones the old ones are still there so that's my opinion on that uh, this um, 8.4 something percent beer is going to my face I can feel it really move warming up now <laughs> yeah it's not for me this it's too sweet it's too I had a nice sweet beer the other day and um, I went to a pub in the middle of nowhere we were just on a drive it was um, one of the it was a Green King one but it wasn't Green King their like main beer it was another it was like an IPA that they do um, I can't remember the name of it. It was nice and it was sweet, but it was like light sweet. It wasn't cloying. It wasn't like syrupy like this. It was. It was nicely. I don't know how to describe the tastes in any different. This is too. You know, it's nice original initially, but after a while, you can't drink many of these. I don't think. No, I definitely wouldn't be going, if I was in a bar ordering this, I definitely wouldn't be going back for another one. Okay, so 20 minutes of rambling. Mm. So, yeah, that's it. If anyone has any other beer recommendations, random questions for me, things for me to talk about, um, anything else leave a comment and I'll try to oblige pledge so thanks for watching till next time goodbye everybody